<clears throat> Hi, Claire. Hi there, Tony. How's it going? It's uh, pretty early in the morning with you. Uh, well, right now it's 11.50 uh, a.m., but uh, Swetha, who is joining, she's on the Pacific Coast, so she'll be a little bit uh, earlier her time. No problem. Well, it's a... Um... Yep, just the uh, towards the end of the day here in the UK. So I'm, I would imagine you haven't had a chance to listen in to any of the other talks hmm. or anything yet. I did join one earlier. I uh, had a little break. I, I start my mornings pretty early, uh, usually online by five thirty, six Eastern. And <clears throat> so uh, I'm just a little bit behind London time that way. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I did catch one earlier. It was good to to be a part. Yeah, no, there's been some um, some great presentations I think already. That's good. Mm. Um, it looks like we've got just a small number of people already joined, but we are a couple of minutes yeah. still to get going. So um, I would like to wait. I, I will give people just a bit of a reminder of the, the format. Um, uh, so they'll, yep. uh, um, and, and possibly um, uh, also introduce that again through the session if, if it looks like people are coming, ducking in and out, because sometimes people you know, like to jump between, <laughs> sort of jump between uh, sessions if they uh, if they can't stay, but they want to watch more than one thing at the same time, of course. Yep, and I always forget, like, are we already live? Anybody who's joining can already- We are live, so. Hey guys, then. <laughs> Hi, everyone. <laughs> yep, the, the, you should see the little recording. Do you see the recording button at the top? I do see the recording. I wasn't sure if that was, uh, hey, thank you for the hello. <laughs> Yeah, we could already tee up questions if anybody wanted to get that started. Absolutely. Um, yeah. yeah, this is uh, the joy of virtual format is uh, we don't have to wait to pass the mic around at the end of the talk. Um, this is, uh, I, I like to think this is a bit like, you know, if you and Sweto and I were, were um, you know, in a room having a having a conversation, a few people just stood up at a, at a physical conference and, and came and joined our talk. Um, uh, that's that's what it should feel like. Oh, yeah, I, I love to do that. Like when you're at an expo, you know, and there's two people kind of in it, and you just like say, "Huh, is that something I want to listen at?" So yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so that's that's the that's the, the kind of the, you know the the opportunity I think, and of course the joy is we've probably got people um uh, be joining us from all over the world. Uh, yeah, um, which is uh, something that you know. So I think there's an inclusivity about uh, the virtual format. Um, which is which is great, and um, I think we're now spot on time. <clears throat> and it saves me sixteen hours on flights too, so yeah, that's awesome. Sixteen hours on flight, a lot of jet lag, a lot of you know away from home and family time, and yeah, yeah. There's it's... something to be said for <clears throat> for this model. Uh, yeah, you, you imagine going forward, but we'll be doing a lot more of these. You know, we'll also be doing the other stuff, but a lot more of these, I think, too. So yeah, and but, I think we, we will. Uh, you know, the hybrid will be kind of where we end up. So. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, uh, welcome, Sweta. Um, so uh, I'm just going to, my name is Claire Barrett. I work at APIs First. I make strategy happen. And uh, delighted to have the opportunity to moderate this uh, uh, session, this round table um, with uh, like Tony. 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 You know, you moderating our session for us. Thank you for doing this. <laughs> oh, not at all. Um, it's a privilege. It's a privilege. And IBM, um, obviously, a, a stalwart and, and long-term supporter and partner of IP, API Days and, and a gold sponsor, um, which is uh, fantastic to have you all here. Um, so for the, for the group's um, perspective, um, uh, Sweta and Tony are joining us from the API management and gateway cloud integration team at IBM. Um, Tony, I understand you lead the team. Um, Sweta's product manager. Yeah, yep. uh, yeah. We we both set product strategy uh, and uh, look to see how we're going to invest and keep up with all the the wonderful things that are happening in market with customers and the kind of ask they have. So yeah, it's a, it's a joy of a job actually. Mm -hmm. yeah. Fantastic, and uh, um, it's a privilege to have you both joining us from the US. So uh, it's always great to, to 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 spread the international um expertise and 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 capability um what for those um if uh, if any of you um listening in joining us today uh, uh haven't joined one of these round tables before this this is not a kind of slide and q a session this is a interactive conversation um uh between us and um those of you wherever you are um we're delighted for you to you know contribute any questions in real time conversation with us via the online chat if you're really brave and um uh, you know, you want you want to, you can um, share your video and audio even with us and 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 join the group. 
Um, but I recognize the last one I was on, somebody pointed out they were in New Zealand and it was two o'clock in the morning. Um, so that was probably a little bit uh, unfair on them. So, um, but uh, we, um, we welcome any, um, uh, any contribution and conversation. And we have a couple of questions as well that people um, uh, shared with us when we're registering. Um, so Swetland, Tony, um, you wanted to share with us some of the challenges that you see around uh, API testing in, in making development, the development lifecycle more agile, faster, uh, better quality and so on. Um, perhaps you could just introduce for us your, um, uh, you know, some of the, the headlines, some of the things that your, your customers and, and colleagues are, are seeing and experiencing some, some themes in the space. Sure, Swetha, you want to get us started? Uh, yeah, sure, Tony. Uh, thank you, Claire, for having us. It's it's a delight to be part of API World. Um, and uh, before I get started, I just want to say something, like you know, just put out a disclaimer that API testing is a very dear topic to all of us here, like for Tony and um, myself and our team. So uh, we get really excited talking about this. So feel free to um, you know ask us as many questions as you can, and we would be happy to answer all your questions. So um, the most important um, issue that we are seeing is um, we're seeing a huge tectonic change in the way the software is being made, right? Like the world of software development has undergone, undergone a huge metamorphosis. Everything is now getting automated, you know, most of our customers, I'm sure, uh, I'm pretty sure people who are listening also have a CI/CD, a continuous integration and development pipeline in place. Which means, as a developer, I'm going to do a code drop maybe a few hundred times a day, or you know, much more than that. So the frequency of code drops, the frequency of developing the software, has increased tremendously. And if you think about it. Uh, if I'm going to make so many changes to my code, I have to ensure that the code is going to behave the way it should at the end of the day, or else my customers, my app, my uh, website, otherwise is going to be, you know, not reliable, and people are going to be not trusting me anymore. So that's where testing comes into play. So if I'm going to do a lot of code drops, what happens to my testing done? Most often what we see is enterprises automate their development pipeline, which is great, but the, manu the testing remains mostly manual. So which means testing becomes a bottleneck and I'm not able to do testing as frequently as I should uh, because manually, manually, you know, going through the code and make sure that those changes are reflected in my test script. So because of manual testing becoming a bottleneck, enterprises you know, choose to um, not to do testing in in, in the time frame that uh, they should be and that is one of the huge reasons why we see a lot of um, you know blips and burps and all our apps and websites like you know it's getting hung oh I'm getting a you know not a 404 error and things like that so that's the huge problem that we are seeing and trying to address uh, with, with our product as well. So how do we integrate testing with this agile uh, software development process that is in place today? And which is why we, we recommend that, you know, the testing piece has to be automated, just like how you're automating your uh, DevOps pipeline, development pipeline. And we are making sure that, you know, testing doesn't become a, becomes a lag ahead and it doesn't play a catch up to the development process, but they go hand in hand. So that's that's the one of the big um, issues that we're seeing that enterprises are experiencing as they are you know, uh, moving towards this uh, automating their DevOps pipeline. Tony, do you have something to add to that? Yeah, uh, just, yeah. I mean, incredible inhibitor, and it, and it plays it out so frequently. You know, in in um, a, any company uh, that I see that's looking to move towards more agile, uh, and uh, you know, this this like you said is the bottleneck. Uh, where do they get stuck? They get stuck around the testing. They get stuck around you know the pipeline is one thing. You know, but you can build that, and it's it's normally built around. And I can borrow the other organization's processes and bring that in, but I can't borrow their tests. Right, their tests were built on their apps. I need to build. 
because you don't get that uh, the correct uh, affinity of, of tech. I mean, you could say, well, I'll take your test harness, but again, I still need to build my test cases that are appropriate if I want to accelerate my, you know, uh, my timelines and, and that whole shift left strategy becomes increasingly important. And so, so that's where we see a lot of people get hung up. And and I thought one of the points you made with it too was a, a great one, which is, uh, you know, like governance, uh, not this topic, right? Governance is a different topic. Mm -hmm. But governance is an enabler, right? I can't do the business I want to do through these partner channels into my ecosystem. I can't enable all the development communities within my four walls, you know, unless I have good proper governance to make sure I could do that securely. I look at tests similarly, and you, you kind of described it that way too, right? It's the enabler, so I could be more efficient. I could do things faster. If I have those bottlenecks of tests, uh, you know, again, I'm I'm just gated, you know, blocked in many cases by my ability to not scale that part of my my dev uh, DevOps process. Right. Mm -hmm. So so that's where I think people are wanting to get is to how do I do that more efficiently? And then of course with the levels of quality again, which was your other point, so I thought, which is now I have confidence that when I am delivering product, my customers are getting. Uh, you know, the responses, the timeliness of those responses, the quality of those responses, the rich set of information, you know, and of course, the quality program is a, uh, just a key aspect uh, of that. Yeah, no, thank you. Um, thank you both. Um, we did get a question from uh, one of our um, audience registration uh, questions, mm -hmm. um, which was about uh, embedding security testing into the uh, agile um, development process, um, which I know, of course, is uh, yeah, given we're here talking today about embedded finance, um, obviously a very real uh, consideration for all involved in the, uh, uh, the, the financial services industry. Um, could you uh, shed any light on some of the uh, things that you're seeing people are doing now to uh, um, make a difference in this space? Sure, I, I can get this one started with and then you could sure. chime in too. Um, a few years back uh, when we were gearing up at IBM for uh, GDPR, uh, we introduced a uh, methodology called security and privacy by design. It was very much this idea of, you know, we need to bring security into the mindset of the developers, you know, not when it gets into production, <laughs> you know, or the pre-production environment where all those controls are, but how do we bring that, you know, again, shift left all the way back into our, our uh, development environments and the philosophies. And there, there were a number of things that we, we had to do as part of that program. One was education, right? Uh, every developer needs to be educated on security. Um, you know, and we're, we're talking about multiple levels of security. And of course, you know, they're all holistic. We want broad security controls, you know, at every level. But the education to the developer community about like, you know, what is a cross script hack, uh, attack and, you know, how do I prevent that? And what do I have to be mindful of, right? And, and all of these kind of things. The, um, once we, uh, you know, went through the education, it was uh, the technology, the tooling. The tooling needs to be available in each of these environments. Then you have to make uh, very specific choices. Um, you know, one that's been more recent as far as like the, the technology and tools that we use within IBM was, you know, we, we generally now are building containers and operators and we need new technologies that scan, you know, at that layer as well as the code layers. And so, you know, the, because the shape of, of what we're delivering in software has changed. And so the technology, and then how do you bring this technology very, very early into your process? Again, so this way you're cycling much more quickly. Uh, we're not delaying it until it gets into a system integration test, but we pull that into the unit test environment. In some cases, in some technologies, you may not want to do that. It's too early in the build process to do that. And so uh, so I think there's for sure those, those you know, the education choices and the, and the tooling choices. Uh, but then there's a third dimension, of course, which is the... Um, the things that you're going to integrate with as far as, you know, can I leverage the same JAW tokens uh, in, in my my uh, dev environment that I would use in my production environment? Can I really test it? And so it's not only the like the code scan technologies, it's really the CISO sponsored tools uh, and integration points. Uh, can I replicate that in those environments? Once I have all of that, of course, I have, you know, a good environment with which I can stress and so you know no minimizing the education but the technology things i think are are important components and that's really just the the shape of the infrastructure and maybe so i'll pass you baton a little bit more on the but then there's the business domain right of security mm -hmm. and, and what do i want to do there so um like tony mentioned right like security and privacy by design is something that needs to be incorporated when it comes to api security as well so um, you know, we hear about a lot of uh, different types of testing, like when it comes uh, to API, like functional tests, unit tests, mode tests, integration tests. But security is, should also be baked into your uh, testing. And uh, like Tony mentioned, uh, having the tooling that provides you the 
ability to incorporate all of these tests is param is of paramount importance. Um, you know, when when you're looking at your uh, API strategy. Um, when we say security testing, right? Like it's it's just not. Uh, what do we mean by security testing? Is um, you know, it could be as simple as okay, is my input of correct type, and if it's not, should I be rejecting it? Uh, should should my input be empty? And if it's empty, is is that null acceptable, or should I reject it? Um, and you know, should should my input be within a specific range? If not, uh, you know, what's the type of uh, action that I'm going to take? So these are some of the essential. Um, steps that you can incorporate uh, to make sure that you're, uh, you know, if you have a certain security criteria met, so that um, you know you're able to test that out as part of your uh, uh, testing exercise. And in addition to that, um, permissions is a very big thing, right? Like, what level of access, what kind of authentication I should be, um, you know, leveraging when a user or a consumer is using my API. So all of these um, API, like the security uh, aspects of API, can be easily tested as part of your um, API testing uh, script or suite. So uh, I would I would definitely say that you know looking at uh, security from the from the time that you start designing your APIs is is extremely important. And these are some of the um, easy. Um, or not easy, but these are some of the considerations that you should have. Like, what's my input going to be? What type of input? What should I be doing if there's going to be an invalid input? And what type of uh, you know authentication and authorization I'm going to be uh, using to secure my API? So these are some of the things that um, you know your security testing should be thought about when you're thinking about your uh, API development. Claire, I can't hear you for some reasons. What's there? Um, we had a qualifying question, I think, on that theme sweater uh, from uh, the audience, of, uh, or sorry, during the registration um, okay. uh, API connection specifically. Uh -huh. um, can you kind of elaborate a little bit more on on on, on that in terms of um, some of the challenges that, that you've seen, some of the things that uh, people are needing to, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, pre-plan and pre-think about. Hey, Claire, your voice was breaking up. Sorry, I wasn't able to hear you clearly. Can you uh, okay. please? I, I put the question in the online chat as well, just, oh, just to, um, okay. to qualify. Um, and this, Tony, um, you can, if you did hear me okay, you can kind of jump in there. I, I did see it in the chat. I didn't catch it before. But um, yeah, a, API connection perspective, I, I think that's meaning uh, where Swetha was with regard to uh, the uh, the protocols and uh, authentication methods that you're wanting to validate. Yeah, I'm. What I generally see is that most organizations are affording, you know, a preferred model for uh, authentication, and they're looking for a connection. Um, so there's the inbound and the outbound, and so like on the back end, let's assume, uh, you know, we settled with our CISO office how we're doing inbound connections. Uh, often with the back end, we're gated by the uh, different, uh, again, authorization and authentication mechanisms they afford. And that could be both internal uh, to my organization uh, as well as external to SaaS providers, other infrastructure as a service providers. And so uh, the range on the back end is going to be much more diverse than it is on that front end since we've tried to standardize there. And so um, I think the uh, what kind of testing challenges are there for that? Um, you know, one I've seen is depending on the test tools that you have, uh, do the test tools actually really support each of those models in a, an elegant way for you? Uh, you know, and are you constricted to something like basic auth, uh, particularly within open banking, uh, you know, getting to open ID standards for testing uh, in, in ways that would be reflective of the way that I'm going to be moving into production? I think, again, the, the technologies are going to need to support the diversity that you're going to have on your back ends. Uh, to make sure you could troubleshoot those things effectively. Um, so I think that's the first one that comes to my mind. I, I don't know about for you, anything more? Um, I, I think you've got it covered there, Tony. I was also thinking along the same lines, like, you know, uh, how do we um, make sure that, you know, we adhere to these different protocols or different standards, and how do we make sure that, you know, 
um, you know, how, how, how good my API is secured in, in terms of am I adhering to the open standards? You know, is my, uh, am I okay with the PSD2 or uh, UK open banking standards and whatnot? So um, I think Tony, what you said was uh, perfectly good. You know, one other thing that came to mind um, was uh, w when working with uh, SaaS providers, I see a number of people where <clears throat> they, they don't have dev test instances. Basically, everything is prod. And so, you know, there's this question about, like, you know, where do I do my testing and which systems am I connecting to in order to do that? Um, and so, in, in part, some of the challenges actually I see with re when people have more than one environment is, um, are, are we uh, parameterizing our tests in the appropriate ways such that, you know, people are uh, within my development environment not testing against the production environments, right? And, and uh, again, parameterization, just uh, managing those variables appropriately to ensure the, uh, the sanctity <laughs> of a personally identifiable information and other data people shouldn't have access to. I think, uh, you know, the, again, the governance topic, right? That's where governance does meet security, uh, you know, in, in being the... Uh, Kind of the uh, test team, you know, the people who are equipping all the teams to do testing uh, management. I think of those credentials becomes uh, a, an aspect of your internal governance program, which I think is probably a great segue into to the other question that I put in there around um, uh, that came through uh, in the registration around managing um, the you know the different data sets, um, which of course is uh, in this case sandbox as product um, production data and confidence in managing those which. Uh, is, is a classic, you know, a challenge in the testing space. Uh, we've also got a question here from James. Um, what role do you see AI-powered testing tools play like, um, and enabling agility, which is uh, probably a great theme for um, very current at the moment? You, you, maybe I'll take the first one and then Swith, you could take that next one that just came in from James. Uh, so clear the one you posted. Um, yeah, there are some uh, uh, obfuscation tools that we have at IBM. You know, I've seen others as well offer similarly, which is, uh, you know, how do we take uh, sensitive information and, and make it such that it's uh, easily usable? And that's really a, a corporate strategy. Uh, but it's, uh, you know, a, as the person, let's say, in an organization who owns a line of business, uh, you know, I am concerned uh, at every level, you know, including prison, <laughs> that I, I, I treat that carefully, right? And so it's a, it's a real concern. It's worth the investment to um, to develop the strategy, to invest in the technologies around that, and to ensure that you have it. Now, given that you have, and I think this is where more of the question was going, um, the the obfuscated data. How do you make sure it's it's complete <clears throat> in ways that you will need it to complete? And um, you know, one of the things that we're working with uh, in the lab is this idea of test coverage, right? Um, do, do I have sufficient levels of test cases that test every permutation? And I think the, the scenario that you run into with incomplete data sets is you're not testing sufficiently. And so from a management perspective, if we're thinking about that quality program, uh, you know, what is there to help us with test coverage to ensure that uh, you know, my limited data set really is comprehensive for the kind of scenarios that I'm going to see in production? And this is an interesting area that we're investing in with respect to artificial intelligence. We think that there's a, quite a bit of technology we've observed in the AI ops space that is really, really useful for this problem domain. And so, um, so whoever posted that, if you want to reach out, I'll post my uh, my email address and the uh, the link you can find me online. I'm very happy to take that conversation offline because uh, definitely relevant. Uh, you know, because at the moment that you have to protect your data, you run into this, and uh, you know there is insight we can get from your production environment. I think that's useful for how do you inform your test cases. Right. So, yeah. And Swayth, do you want to take that next one? Uh, yeah, sure. Tony. So the question was, how do we, uh, what role, if any, uh, do you see AI powered testing tools play in API testing and agile uh, development? Uh, that's a very good question and a very relevant question in today's, um, you know, topic, right? Like you see AI everywhere and we do recognize that AI is uh, immensely helpful. And at IBM, as you know, Watson, we are big on AI. We bet you know, we were one of the pioneers to bet big on AI at, at the start. Um, so we definitely do see a lot of um, potential where, you know, we could leverage AI in automate in automating or, you know, in, um, in helping API testing to be more self-sufficient. Now, if you look at what 
the current scenario is right like um testers have to manually write code or write test cases what if you know a ai tool can help me do that what if an ai tool can look at my api calls look at the context in which you know the api call is made and it automatically generates you know a set of tests for me so my qa team is going to be a lot relieved right like so they're going to have uh, an ai generated test that's probably going to cover 95% of all these scenarios and they don't have to spend a lot of time which is again a big bottleneck right like the qa team has to understand the code uh, and then they have to write the code and let's say what if they not exposed to the code so everything is going to add up in terms of time consumption so that's where we really really think that ai would play a very crucial role in terms of helping um in in automatically generating these test cases that's going to address a majority of the use cases and scenarios have you got any examples of organizations um uh, or or particular kind of case studies where you're seeing that ai has this you know that you could you could cite as great kind of role models or um, examples of where there's been a real difference, or even if you can't name a specific client, but some some kind of illustrations of some of the metrics that you've been able to to move, or that you see you see as a trend coming. Yeah, yeah I think um, piecing apart uh, some of what Swetha responded with, uh, you know, there's the uh, given a uh, a test case that somebody already knows, you know, which is the ability to send a request and get a response and then validate that through regression cycles. Uh, our ability to generate sufficient level of test cases given a request and a response, there, there's a tremendous amount of automation that we already do actually in API Connect at IBM in that space, which is, is quite different and quite accelerating already. Uh, because imagine a payload of, of a test that's got hundreds and hundreds of fields in it. You know, being able to test each one of those with uh, business rules that can be asserted and validated on a myriad of different then API calls that follow it is a very mm -hmm. useful construct. And that, you know, is known good tech in you know in our enterprise offering. Um, some of the cases where we were looking at, like I was describing about test coverage. Uh, that's uh, part and parcel of a domain. I think that we're just starting to explore from an ABI, IBM standpoint. Um, one, uh, I'll, I'll point to another adjacent one that I think is in the market and not represented at IBM, but I think is very interesting also, is uh, some of the API security where we see people uh, analyzing uh, traffic patterns uh, and looking for uh, uh, what is an outlier pattern that perhaps uh, represents threat uh, and a number of different vendors I know who have been investing in artificial intelligence in that way. Uh, we think that kind of pattern analysis is very interesting, not just for API security, but for other things that we can assert with respect to uh, you know other dimensions like business value. Right, this is a high use pattern, and so uh, some uh, different technologies that we can apply. There's another one that we're we're actually built at IBM in delivering to market in our App Connect, you know, where we do uh, integration flow development, which is semantic reconciliation. I've got all of these fields here on the source and all these fields here in the target, being able to match that in order to create an integration service that's exposed as an API, again, great accelerator. And then we do have some reference use cases around that pattern as well, uh, is, is that's, you know, well known and understood and delivered technology. And so, you know, I think there's, a, it, you know, we think really quick, API for lifecycle. <laughs> You know, there's touch points for AI in each one of those dimensions. Uh, I get very excited about the create one, uh, but these other security and tests, you know, these are also very, very important. And I think we really haven't, as a market, explored artificial intelligence and the idea and the notion of, of socialization. Uh, I, I think that one's yet untapped, but some very interesting things that we're exploring at IBM for that as well. Sounds fantastic. Um, and I realize we're already at time. Um, uh, 25 well, minutes goes too fast, hey? Yeah. Um, an absolute delight for you to have joined us from the States today. Um, thank you both very much for your time. I hope you enjoy the rest of the conference and uh, thank you to everyone in the audience for joining us um, and for sharing your uh, details. Both Sweta and Tony can be uh, accessible when you need. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Bye. Have a good day. Bye.